Good evening. I thought that there'd be something to look at. Much ado about nothing. Who are you? Last time, a different housekeeper came to greet me. How about that? What? Don't you like us? That remains to be seen. We haven't known one another long enough. I have all I need to know who I'm dealing with. This is Maria. And this is Magdalena. We've all been waiting for you. Maria and Magdalena. Very interesting. Do you work for the Nandarzyńskis? Grigory invited us here. He's waiting for you. Look at you two, joined at the hip. Are you ever apart? Rarely. We complete one another, not just in conversation. Stop it. I'm sure he's not here to talk to us. Then what do you want? I've come to see Rasputin. We know, we know. It looks familiar, and yet different. At last, the wait is over. Here he is. Sit down, Victor. What's going on? What sort of little shindig is this? It's an expression of gratitude. I didn't expect crowds. I was hoping we could speak privately. Patience. Have a seat, as I asked you, and all will be explained. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. The moment has finally come. Here, too, is my loyal friend, Viktor Sholsky. It's thanks to him that we are where we are. And we will be in the future, where we intend. My mind has long been flooded with bloody visions. In their scarlet color, the mists of the future are reflected. I see a great star falling to the blood-stained earth. And the force of its impact tears the roof from sacred temples. Including the Orthodox Church of St. Mary Magdalene, here in Braga. The earth swallows up the Iberian Gate. Kazan Cathedral stands underwater, and Notre Dame de Paris is consumed by fire. Our homeland will then be exhausted by an illness that has long eaten away at her. There is a feeble spark of hope for us. It still flickers, though it may soon go out. No. The heir to the throne, little Alexei Romanov, is ill. What's troubling him? Life is spilling out of him. The devil himself is tearing him apart from the inside, demanding blood. Poor child. But let's not be sad. 
This news is joyful, as a matter of fact. Because now we know where the source of the danger is, and I can help him. I will heal the heir, just as I heal Victor, though he was bereft of hope. Isn't that true, friend? It's true. If not for Grigori, I wouldn't be among you anymore. I'd have lost my mind. But thanks to his miracles, I'm still here, and I can testify to that. I've helped you, just as you've helped us all. Thank you, friend. This is all unnecessary. Truthfully, I've done nothing. Powerful but modest. Where have you been all my life? You gave us a chance. And as God as my witness, I won't waste it. Healing the Tsarevich means healing something much greater. The future. A future where each of us will receive equality and respect, regardless of who we are. Free from the afflictions of the body and the soul. Living in health and its resulting ecstasy. Finally, in a future in which we can do anything, but don't have to do anything. Offering unhindered freedom. To the Thaumaturge's health! I'd rather not wake up to sights like that. You didn't want Ligia to see you in such a state. In that case, it could have been one of my best decisions. Looking at the events of last night may be the only right one. Time to get up, get yourself together, and uh, we'll talk later. Sleep is a waste of time.
There you are, finally. What really happened? My memory is failing me. For those that sleep in the night are asleep, and those that drink are drunken. Unbelievable. Remember, no matter what happens, everything stays between us. This whole farce, the thank yous, what's it all for? What intentions do you have towards me? Intentions that we become friends and help one another and complement one another. I have skills that you don't, and vice versa. I'm not hiding anything from you, Victor. This place looked different. The Nadarinsk is the two. Everything is happening according to their will and with their blessing. Not all of them are as favorable to you as your hosts. The housekeeper quit. Well, Jesus had opponents too. And look how it worked out for him. You're aiming high. The highest. Anything else you want to share? People believe in you. Yesterday, I felt as though I was part of some kind of cult. People are everything, Victor. And we, we are almost like a family. Better, because we're joined by choice, not by blood. We're harbingers of the change that will soon take place. I'm only a guide lighting our way. If there's something still on your mind, speak up. All these people, you've gathered a colorful group. We all come from different environments, from different rungs on the ladder. And that's the most beautiful thing about this. What have you found out about them? How did you manage to convince the Tsarist officer to come to you? He came of his own accord, like all of you. Lazarev has great potential. He's exceptionally eager. He senses that his country is sick, and he'd like to solve the problem. Is there more you need to know? Maria is calculated. She stays close because in you, she sees a chance for a better life. And what's wrong with that? I respect that. I don't demand that you all gaze upon me like a sacred icon. But loyalty? There are all sorts of ways a person can win that for themselves. Anything else? Magdalena still hasn't rid herself of her youthful naivete. I think she's honestly fallen in love with you. Are you surprised she has? Many a love has had such a beginning. She's a good girl. Let's not hold that against her. Aniela is unknowable, and Lucian is unhappy about the changes taking place in her. Aniela has completely given up her lust for my sake. She'd rather just pray and pray. I respect that greatly, but I must share my time with others. Do you think that Lucian is jealous about the time his wife devotes to me? It's possible. Don't worry about it. Keep talking and asking. Enough about these people. I'm at your service, Victor. Ask for what you want. I'll leave you alone. I've got business to get back to. Go in health, friend. That wasn't too hard.
Let me rest. I wonder exactly what he's up to. What do you mean, who? Rasputin. Let's wait until... So, let's... Can you feel him? He moves with the bustle of the market and the rustle of sand grains around the stalls. It feels like the sun is standing at its zenith and burning mercilessly. It's a visitor from a harsh desert land. A djinn. I felt something. Where is it? Would you like to buy some flowers? They'll steal your heart. Have you perhaps noticed any unprecedented phenomena happening here? Here? Mister, there's a thousand and one of those happening every day. How about a flower? Maybe some other time. As you wish, sir.
My, I can see you need a haircut, sir. Is it that obvious? Please, do your thing. No worries. We'll fix it in no time. How do you like your new hairdo? It's not exactly what... Fine. If you want to look dignified, we'll get you some mutton chops. And if you prefer a romantic look, I will do some Marceline. Let's see. How do you like your new hairdo? Perfect. I look brand new. You were already very handsome. I only needed to further enhance your looks. The one with the book. You oozing carbuncle. You ain't had enough of Warsaw yet? So you're sticking your nose in on people here? You know what happens to fellas who sniff around where they ain't supposed to? Miruf, don't kid around with them. And who am I supposedly bothering? And you've wasted the chance to keep your mouth shut. We'll cure this posh boy of his nosiness, you can bet.
You're talking nonsense! By ever did you hear about Praga? I'm at the harbor getting fish, and half the wharf is in splinters. They said there's even bodies. More bodies than they usually fish out of the Vistula. Practically every day. They were only just writing about Povishle. But listen to this. They're saying it's some giant did it all. You sure? Maybe I can help. Recently, I've taken an interest in one of those. Leave us alone. Did you wander in here by mistake? I hope those guys outside are your relatives. Otherwise, you're paying too much for your protection. Are you scared of something? I'm not easily frightened. I have the time spent working with your father to thank for that. You got some dirty laundry that needs cleaning, Mr. Shulsky. I was interested in this giant you mentioned to the fishmonger. I can't help you. Rabbis are the ones who deal with golems. I didn't say anything about a golem. I'm afraid I can't help you. And now, if you'd like... You were curious how my father died. Beneath the ruins of a building in Shrudmieszcze. That's awful. How did it happen? I'm glad you're asking. A remarkable death, isn't it? Yes. Let's have a word about your conflict with my father. There was no such thing. I have warm feelings for the store, and his father as well. Why did you quit working for my father? It was a mutual decision. I know that you and my father parted ways in bad terms. What happened? We both had difficult personalities, but I still remember him fondly. You're not telling me everything. I don't have to explain myself to you, Mr. Sholsky. I'm leaving now, but I can tell this won't be the last time we meet. Farewell. Hello. You said a month, two at most. I believed you. Then came the very first rain, and it was pouring in again. You fixed it, then the next rain. Soaked. I can't sleep because I have to keep emptying buckets. It's leaking just as badly as it was before. But the eyes of God are in every place, and they're watching. Rabbi. When I said two months, you said there was one hole in the ceiling, but the whole building is in shambles here. I can do it. Quiet. 
You can seal up your daddy's barn with straw. The roof is gonna get holes because the foundations are crumbling. So, let's go down to the basement. Oh no, definitely not there. What's in the basement that's so frightening? Hashem, something down there reeks so awful. Come now, don't be silly. Am I speaking to Rabbi Sofer? You see, all I gotta do is mention these cellars and his name comes up. Would Hashem let a synagogue be haunted? Hey now, quiet. You're too late, I'm afraid. My name is Feldman. Rabbi Sofer departed this world almost a year ago. Forgive me, I have worldly matters to attend to. I understand, Rabbi. And if someone were to help you with these workers? In the words of the market woman trying to tempt a Jewish man into idolatry, what harm would it do? <laughs> I understand. Back up. God helps those who help themselves. But maybe you're right, Rabbi. Maybe Hashem is afflicting us, setting a test for us. You heard the Goy talking about Sofer. The old man cursed this place, especially these cellars. So I'll go on my own, and show that Hashem protects me against curses in Hashem's domain. On your own. You can seal up your daddy's barn, right? Fine, let's go. You've gotten the better of me again, Hashem. Your tests still surprise me. But if this is your will, I think Hashem has sent you to me. Who are you? I'm the son of Stanisław Szulski, and I really need help. Let's go into my office. Let's show Hashem we accept the challenge. Please, tell me what problem brought you here. Maybe, Rabbi, you could tell me something about golems. Thaumaturge, golems belong to Kabbalah, and you're forbidden from knowing anything about them. It's a trap for a soul. There are tales of golems being summoned for revenge, or in good faith, for protection. But they all end rather badly. Rabbi Sofer puts a curse on my father. Unfortunately, it started affecting his children as well. A curse is a serious accusation, you know. I find it hard to believe Sofer would do such a thing. Do you think this has something to do with a golem? I don't know. Did the old rabbi perhaps leave some things here? May I take a look at them? Yes, here you are. All his books are here. I don't think I threw anything out. Is there anything else I can help you with? 
Rabbi, could you tell me something about Sofer? He was fair, but also difficult and very principled, like this city. Riots, provocations, pogroms, overpopulation. But if he's the one who inflicted the curse, he must have been a powerful thaumaturge and Kabbalist. Who can summon a golem? Normally, it's determined by need. The Kabbalist rabbi summons the golem himself, but other Jewish people can also entreat him to do so. In legends, the golem is a terrible punishment and a tool for meeting out divine justice. But I think it's an offense against Hashem, and revenge is no justice. How can I stop a golem? To summon it to life, you write the three Hebrew letters spelling MS, truth, on the clay that formed it. In an attempt to stop the monster, the heroes of these legends would erase the first letter from its clay body. That leaves mess, which means death. But I don't know how much truth is in that. Rabbi, could you help me understand something about Kabbalah? No, and I'll say no more on the subject. I fear for your soul. I'm afraid that I won't find anything more here. Thank you, Rabbi. Rabbi? I'm listening. Mordechai Chayat. Do you know that name, Rabbi? He owns one of the laundries here in Miruf, but I admit he doesn't really come to see me. Maybe there are other things I could be of more help with. I found a prescription belonging to the old Rabbi. Was something troubling him? He had heart problems. The local pharmacist would even bring him some kind of special medicine. What was that pharmacist called? Abraham Horowitz. But now his pharmacy is sitting empty. Let me guess. He's dead? Unfortunately. Some say that the socialists were involved. Others claim it was the Ochrana's doing. Let's keep talking, if you need to. I'll be off now. I'll pray for you. What do you want to tell me, friend? The things people come up with.
Hello, sweet secret. Is there something else you need? Let's talk about your relationship with my father. A tense relationship. Mr. Sholsky, I'll say it one more time. Stanislav and I didn't quarrel. Liar. Your anger still lingers around the photograph of my father. You're going to find it hard to hide anything from me. I'm not in the habit of speaking ill of the dead, Mr. Shulsky. Especially to their family. Old grudges drove us apart. Not all stains are easy to remove. Especially ones on a person's honor. And might they give you a reason to seek revenge? A motive? I can't summon golems if that's what you're getting at. But you know there is such a possibility. Is that all? I need to get back to work.
I know about the pharmacist. Beg your pardon? All this is because Abraham Horowitz, isn't it? He lost his life, and the whole community felt it. Seems like you did most of all. I just don't get why Horowitz was so important to you. Community. Something you Shulskis don't know a thing about. Here, we take care of everyone equally. No one is more or less important than anyone else. Your father's punishment was fitting for his actions and his background. The wrath of the Jewish people. A death for a death. Was it worth it? A golem is a blunt instrument that kills and harms everyone in reach. What are you talking about? You wanted to teach my father a lesson, and you did. It's too bad innocent people died in the process. The building that collapsed on Stanisław, it was inhabited by people. Now all that's left of them are some damaged items. That's what happens every time the golem physically manifests. Random people lose their lives due to its untamed power. No, it can't be. It wasn't supposed to be that way. I don't think the punishment is adequate for the crime. Horowitz had something on his conscience. He must have, if both the Ohrana and the Socialists were interested in him. And what my father did... I can't believe I'm saying this, but his motives seem noble. Oh, do they? There's no trace of cruelty in his actions. He didn't do it for his own profit, but for some kind of... greater good. Without any specifics, those are just words. You'll see for yourself, if you do something for me. What do you want? To get rid of the golem. Tell me something, anything, that will get me closer to a solution. Instead of telling you, I'll show you. Where? Into an alley, where some friend of yours will smack me around? To the synagogue. Are you coming? Yes. Let's go. We'll stop to get Feldman. He should see this too. So, no wonder the roof is leaking if the foundation is crumbling. A lovely metaphor, Hashem. But what happened here had nothing to do with Hashem, did it? Mr. Shulsky wished to know the origin of his curse. 
This is where it took its shape. If I'd... Now I see it differently, but... But back then, when I was talking to Sofer, revenge and justice seemed one and the same. Revenge is no justice. It is always dictated by anger, and in anger, Eren comes easily. But Sofer agreed to it. He summoned the golem. What else do you want to know? What do you remember from the moment you summoned the golem? Nothing. I don't want to go back to that. Your memory takes shape and forms into words. Talk to me, Mordechai. I feel cold. Cold from the clay seeps into my fingers, into my bones. But the Colossus I've been sculpting for hours is nearly ready. Sofer whispers the spell in Hebrew, but his words throb in my temples and soul. The Colossus comes to life and looks at me. What did Sofer say then? I don't... I don't know. Speak. I couldn't hear, I swear. I couldn't hear. Truly. Enough, I beg you. Enough. Your family and your blood deserve this curse. Enough. Ah, yet. How could Sofor have done something like this? And you, sir, how are you not ashamed? Maybe I've treated higher than fairly. You made him relive all that. That's torture. I wanted to know. Anything might help us get rid of the golem. Even so. This place won't tell me any more. And what have you learned? The hole you can't miss over there is the new door the golem smashed when it was summoned to life. And no one saw anything. How is that possible? The clay formed a shell that Sofer infused with the Salutar. Hyal brought it and spent hours shaping the body of the golem. Hours? That must have been horribly exhausting. What's a few hours in exchange for a curse that lasts generations? Mm. These are the remains of some fabric that Sofa wrote something on, in Hebrew, I think. This might be some prayer, incantation, even a spell. There's not enough left to read anything. That's all, but I'm not any closer to a solution. I need someone like Sofa. A thaumaturge and a Kabbalist? Do you know one, Rabbi? Well, there is someone. Normally, I'd advise against contacting him, but after considering these extraordinary circumstances, and with trust in your choice of a path to lead me down, I'm compelled to reveal that it's Ariel Rofe. Of course. Do you know one another? Well, I know him well enough to suspect that he might not want to help me, but I'll look for him. Mercy rebuilds bridges. I think I know where Rafa would tell me to shove that. All right, I think it's time for us to go. This place just makes the blood boil. Shall we? Let's get out of here.
quiet this time. Bored? Then go ask that uniform what he's doing here. Or tell him to skidoo. Hey, fancy pants! Fuck off! Hang on, hang on. You lost, officer? Hang on! That's the mama's boy of Shrudmeshche! They dubbed me the son of Shrudmeshche, if I remember correctly. Easy enough to check. Hang on, hang on! That's enough! You! You're the son of a bitch of Shrutnesche! I'm looking for Ariel Rofe. All right, I don't know. Just tell him something. Take a look at Ruzitsky Bazaar. He has got this sort of... ...geschäft there. Thanks. They're right to call this place the dungeon.
nothing can be kept secret from me. What a day. I wonder exactly what he's up to. What do you mean? Let's wait until... So, let's... The things people come up with. Nothing can be kept secret from me. Let's wait. So... Nothing can be kept secret from me.
Aren't your legs getting sore? Stupid question. I wonder exactly what... What do you mean? Let's wait until... So... Not now, Victor. I don't have time. The store looks better than I remembered. More... human. I've sorted through the remaining junk, and I'm keeping the monkey brains, prepared corpses, and potency ointments just in the catalog now, so mothers can come here with their kids. Do you want to be better than father? People look at a businesswoman strangely, so I, I'm doing my best. I have. 